It's Dr. Alan Blum uh, on August 5th, 2015, uh, talking about the history of Dakota. This was a brand that R.J. Reynolds introduced in early 1990 as a way to reach uh, young women who bought Marlboro. And uh, early on, a uh, wonderful person in Washington received a copy of a marketing book. Uh, Anne Marie uh, was married to a congressperson in, uh, in D.C., and she sent us a copy of the uh, marketing report that was going to uh, launch uh, Dakota. This was going to be test marketed in Houston and Nashville. And Houston, of course, was where Doc was headquartered. And the theme was aiming at, uh, as the marketing report said, uh, young women who go to tractor pulls with their boyfriend and identify with the bitches and the soap operas. Uh, it was really rather um, amazing that uh, th this was uh, in, it, it fell into our hands, but it enabled us to get a head start on uh, subverting the uh, test marketing in Houston. Now, this was all over town. It was on billboards uh, featuring a woman in jeans and really uh, almost right out of a country nightclub and um, very provocative. You'd go into a, a, a convenience store and there would be this, this six-foot-tall um, cardboard cutout that would be standing right there in front of the, can uh, the uh, ca cash register. And um, it was a blitz, and this was indeed a real test market. And a typical example of the full-page newspaper headlines in the Houston Post and Houston Chronicle, and also the alternative weeklies, were, would be, Houston is famous for big deals, big domes, and individuals who make up their own minds. And it had a pack of Dakota next to a pack of Marlboro, and then you decide. So uh, we, we had a lot of fun with this, and we immediately came up with uh, a spoof on Dakota, uh, and we wound up getting Doug Minkler to put it into a, uh, a full-page ad that we wanted to purchase. And the ad said, Houston, home of the largest medical center in the world, asked you to make up your own mind. You decide, Dakota, to cough, to cancer, or to coffin. And we had a, a pack of Dakota um, next to a pack of Barfboro. Um, we sent this to the Houston... Uh, Chronicle, which uh, immediately wrote us back that they would not accept the ad. Um, in speaking with the uh, the people at the at the newspaper, and they did put this in writing that they wouldn't take the ad, but they um, they said this would offend their advertisers. Now, the, the Houston Chronicle downtown um, still had uh, cigarette displays in its windows. Somehow, the Brown and Williamson people had been able to convince the Houston Chronicle to. Uh, uh, promotions for cool cigarettes in in their windows, but that's a whole other story. Um, anyhow, we um, we had bumper stickers that said Dakota to cough to cancer or to cough, and but one of the typical examples of 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 the fun that we had with this was uh, uh, Ross Bannister, who was the Lung Association's point person on smoking, would uh, get on his nice white shirt and tie, roll up his sleeves, put a pencil behind his ear, have a clipboard and walk into convenience stores, and he would begin to disassemble the huge Dakota woman uh, blow-up uh, cigarette promotions. And he'd have to really drop the clipboard and fold it down and, and, and then, you know, have to reach down and stick it under his arm, and he'd start walking out, and invariably the cashier or the manager would say, hey, hey, wh what are you doing? And he'd look around, give him a dirty look, and say, what do you mean, what am I doing? And he'd look at his clipboard, and he'd hold it up, and he'd say, we're just taking it. And, of course, uh, that's exactly what he was doing. He wasn't lying. He was taking it. Um, presumably, the, the, the cashier thought he was working for the companies. So we have about six of these uh, blow-up uh, uh, Dakota women in our storage area. I did do a, a report on Dakota. Um, by this point, we were um, the, the, our spoof was getting uh, around. Uh, the Houston Post wrote an editorial. The... Uh, they loved it, as did the Denver Post, and they wondered why R.J. Reynolds would test market a, um, uh, a campaign in Houston uh, when that was the, the home of Doc, which was used to doing mad-like parodies of the cigarette ads. We did uh, not get these ads accepted in the Houston Post or the Houston Chronicle, but the Public News, which was an alternative weekly, uh, loved the ad, and they ran it. I think we spent $400 on the ad. 
And they then informed us not long after that that R.J. Reynolds had told them that they would, would be pulling all of their cigarette ads as a result. But they were very pleased to have worked with us. Um, a lot of the public relations magazines picked up on this article, uh, this story, and uh, w it, it really had, had legs. Uh, but I did a report on the, um, the story and uh, submitted it for the World Conference on Tobacco or Health in Argentina in I believe in, in 1992, and um, it, it uh, really was well received. We had quite a lot of people in the audience, and then I went around and, and said hello to people, and people were avoiding me. And, and, and finally, one woman, Dorothy Rice, who is a well-known um, uh, epidemiologist uh, on tobacco, a really legendary figure from San Francisco, came up to me and said, Alan, I'm disgusted with what you did. And I said, what are you talking about, Dorothy? She says, oh, come on, don't you know? I said, no, I don't know. She says, imagine you calling women bitches. And I looked at her and I said, what are you talking And then I realized in my talk I had quoted from the marketing book of the R.J. Reynolds Company uh, looking at uh, what they were going to do with Dakota aiming at the bitches who uh, watch the soap operas, uh, uh, bitches in the soap operas and who go to tractor pulls with their boyfriends. And I realized, and I explained to her, and she says, oh, my God. She says, the ultra-feminists are out to get you. And uh, apparently the word had gone vi uh, viral at that time. We didn't have computers, or, or at least we didn't have cell phones. And so all over this conference, the word was out that I was a misogynist, and uh, people were coming up to me and cursing me. And I said, no, 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 this is not true. I didn't do this. And I, and I, so they, they found the woman who was spreading the rumor, and she glared at me when they tracked her down. She says, no, I heard you say it. I said, but no, the context was, and I showed her the context. She said, no, no, I heard what you said. But a fellow walking by at that precise moment said, excuse me, I, I hear you talking about what Dr. Blum said. I was in there, and I, what you're saying is not true. He said it in the context of the marketing report. Well, she still wasn't giving up. And he said, no, I even made a tape of it. And once he played the tape recording of it, she said, oh, oh, okay, never mind, and wound up apologizing and inviting me to the Women's Caucus, uh, to the Women's Caucus on Tobacco, where I gave another talk, and, and we became very good friends as a result.